Hey everybody, this is Troy with eBuzz Central. Today we're going to take a look at OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. But before we get started, be sure to like and subscribe. And remember, your likes and subscribes this month count towards an entry into the ASUS ZenBook 14 giveaway that we're doing on August 31st, 2021. Well, I have booted into a virtual machine. I have assigned it three processors and three gigabytes of RAM. And this is the opening screen to OpenSUSE. You're met with this basics, readme, documentation, git software, support, plasma help, Contribute. If you want to contribute to the developers of OpenSUSE, you go there. Or build OpenSUSE from code. You can just go in here, click, and it'll build it from source, and you're ready to go. I am actually running the KDE Live version. So I'm going to close out of this and just take a look around. I do like the aesthetic. I really love the wallpaper. You're met up here with the upgrade. If you've already got OpenSUSE installed, you can upgrade. Or if you're wanting to just install OpenSUSE, there's the installation. And then, of course, the home and trash can on the desktop. Come down here. You've got settings, Discover, which is the software center, Dolphin File Manager, and Firefox. Let's go into settings real quick. And you're met with the settings menu, which is pretty basic across Linux distributions. Um, being it, this is OpenSUSE, it's a little different than what you would see in Manjaro and things like that. But first off, you've got appearance. Let's go into there real quick. And this is a light appearance. I would like to switch it to dark mode, but I do that in all my videos, so I'm going to leave this one in a light mode so you all can see. You get breeze, breeze dark, breeze twilight, or the OpenSUSE theme, which I do believe is what we are on. And that's funny, it's got global theme twice. Application style, of course it gives you the option to change the way your applications look, whether you want the thin bars or the thick bars. Uh, plasma style, at present we're in the OpenSUSE plasma style, but you do have eight others to choose from. Colors, you can go in and change your colors on your windows. Windows decorations. Fonts, I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the fonts up because I do wear glasses because I'm hard to see. Hard to see in up close. Let's go to 12. I'm going to click OK and apply. And those applied system wide. All right. Icons. We are currently running the Breeze icon theme. You could always go to Breeze Dark. Or if you want to get new icons, you just click on here. And there's a plethora of them to choose from. Cursors. You only get two. But you can go get more if you want them. Font Manager, and then of course the splash screen. You can go in and pick what splash screen you want, whether you want the OpenSUSE or the Breeze, or download a new one. That's what you gotta love about Linux. They let you customize everything from top to bottom. You also got Workspace Behavior, Window Manager, Shortcuts, Startup, Shutdown, Search, Notification Settings, Users, Regional Settings, your typical KDE settings. So let's go ahead and close out of this and let's see what we get out of the box. Out of the box, application wise and graphics, you get GwynView, Ocular, and ScanLight, which is an image scanning application, internet, you get Firefox, and then you've got Conversation, which is your internet chat client that you can set up right here inside KDE. Multimedia, you get VLC Media Player. Office, you get Ocular. Settings, you got your system settings, your YAST, and your Wacom tablet finder. Now, your YAST is actually your administrator settings. And as administrator of your machine, you can come in here and set up everything. You can do add on products, install or remove add on products, media check, software repositories, software management, hardware information. Let's go ahead and click on that real quick. Uh oh, it's probing my hardware. That sounds kind of wrong. That just completed, and it'll give you a breakdown of everything you got. Your BIOS, uh, boot architectures, Grub, CD run. It'll run a system check on your whole system. You just pull that up. So let's close out of that. System keyboard layout, your sounds, bootloader, date, time, kernel settings. Uh, you've got all kinds of options in here. You can check your hardware, high availability, system, network services, security, and users virtualization, support, and then miscellaneous. So let's back out of YAST. Let's go back over here. System, this just gives you your discover archiving. You got your archiving tool, your discover software center, Dolphin file manager. You got a super user file manager, info center, 
KDE partition, console, K wallet. Let's go ahead and pull console up. Let's pull this over here. Let's run and see if we have HTOP. HTOP is not installed out of the box. Let's try top. Top is installed. Shows that I am presently using 518 megabytes of RAM. That is very impressive. There's 2200 in a buffer or cache, but that's the lowest I've seen in quite a while. It's about 250, 300 lower than Manjaro at rest with console open, so that's pretty impressive. We're going to go check out the Discover Software Center. Look around it a little bit. You've got applications, application add ons, plasma add ons. You've got what's installed. You've got settings. Flat pack is enabled. You can make it default, add source, add flat hub. It shows you your firmware updates about. This is Discover 522.4, an application explorer, Plasma development team, and updates. I'm running in a virtual box, so that may take a while. Applications, developer tools, debugging. Yeah, all of this has got to update, so seeing how I'm in a virtual machine, that might take a while. So let's go ahead and back out of that. File browser is the Dolphin file browser. And one of the things I do like about Dolphin is the way things lined up over here. Sometimes I want them in a different order, like desktop. I don't need that up top, so I'll drink, bring that right above trash, move it. I like having uh, my pictures up here, downloads up there. You can set these up any way you like them. Because I do work mostly downloads, pictures, and videos, and then I can have my documents, music, desktop, and trash. So you can move them in any order you want to. And of course, you can make your folders bigger or smaller if you like. I just really love the customization. And then you come down here, you got your hidden icons. It's got your night color control, your clipboard, software updates, notifications, disks, and devices, lock key status, printers. Then of course, we're cooked to Ethernet battery remaining and then your volume which you can control and another thing I like is you can right click on the panel if you want to edit the panel you can do that you can make it bigger by clicking up if you want to uh, you can get more options panel alignment you can do left center right visibility always visible auto hide you can make it auto hide when you open something open something up windows can cover it or windows can go below it so you get a lot of uh, options there so let's close out of that. Well, another thing, let me show you. Add widgets. You can bring widgets up. You can go over here and you can find a widget that you want to use. Let's see if they still got weather. There's weather. Let's click in weather. Just drag that to the desktop. Close it. Configure it. You can choose the way it looks. If you want a temperature beside the icon, you can do that. Units, keyboard, shortcuts, apparent. Let's go with weather station. Let's choose a weather station. Let's just go with... NOAA, let's enter a location. So let's just go with Dallas Love Field. That'll work. Let's apply. Then we can close out of that and your widget loads up. Then you can enter edit mode and then move it and make it bigger, smaller. Oh, I guess because all the information, it's not going to let me make it smaller, but there's that and then you close out of that and then you get your weather widget but that's just I can remove it it's gone that's how easy it is but there's a lot of customability in this distribution let's go ahead and open up Firefox oh, Firefox opened up okay it comes with DuckDuckGo out of the box there's OpenSUSE website we are currently testing Tumbleweed Leap 15.3 is now available but OpenSUSE is definitely a reliable distribution. I ran it for about six months before I switched to Manjaro. Uh, really enjoyed it. One of the reasons I went to Manjaro was just because I like the overall aesthetic a lot better. But Tumbleweed is definitely a solid distribution. Um, I think if you used it, you would get real comfortable with it. So that was just a quick look at OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. Um, it's definitely a clean looking operating system. It's sharp, I like it. Uh, I like the background. I like the things that you get with it out of the box. Uh, you will need to download, obviously, some Office tools if you need them. If you're into multimedia, you'll need to download your Caden Live or something like that. But it's pretty lightweight. It was only three gigs. 
as opposed to some of them that are four, four and a half gigs. And like I said, this is a live version. If you want to test OpenSUSE, you will have to download a live version. Um, you can't just download what's on their website, put it on a USB and run it. That's only for installation. So you'll have to go do a search, look for a live USB snapshot and download it and then you can put it on a USB or run it in virtual machine. I appreciate y'all watching the video today. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you can be entered into the ASUS ZenBook 14 giveaway that we are going to do the drawing on in seven days, August 31st, 2021. Thank you guys for watching the video and I'll see you in the next video.